the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire and from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force <laughs> one more time again from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of god suffered violence and the violent take it by force spiritual violence This scripture brings an understanding to every Christian that when it comes to the matter of the purpose of God advancing on the earth realm, spiritual violence is required. Are you following me, child of God? He said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. So there are dimensions of blessings that are not given, they are taken. While you are waiting for something, God says by the mystery of violence, people are taking what others are waiting for. How did you become sick? You did not give your health to Satan. Satan took your health. He took it by force. What was taken by force can only be retaken by force. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If they took your peace by force, you can only take it back by force. If they took your joy by force, you can only take it back by force. Leave to us a spiritual violence. Spiritual violence. Hear me. I hear me well. Life is spiritual. Second Corinthians 4 verse 18 says, The things we see are temporal. The things we do not see invisible is eternal. Hear me. Every physical condition is subject to change by application of spiritual violence every condition you see physically no matter how bad it looks it can change by the application of spiritual force if you understand what i'm saying i'm trying to make you understand that if you keep waiting for marriage you will never marry because he said the violent take it if you keep waiting for a child you will never have a child he said they vow and take it so many people have been manipulated by satan to be waiting for something where god has ordained it to be taken the greatest manipulation is for a christian to wait for a blessing that he's supposed to take by violence so you are waiting for growth you will wait for a long time how, how did you lose your business did you give satan he took it out by, by force your child just woke up one day and began crying my stomach my stomach before you went to hospital you see medical report the child was fine but the devil listen to me the kingdom of satan does not understand gentility because their their foundation is false so Jesus said, when you are confronting people whose only language is false, you must apply violence to confront them. You don't confront them with grammar. You don't confront them with mercy. When you are confronting the kingdom of wickedness, he said, violence must be applied. He said, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. So if you are not violent, you can't take it. Is specified that the criteria of people who can take he called them the violent 
So the scripture opens us to understanding that a man must be violent. Child of God, you must understand that life is spiritual. Bible says in Luke chapter 13 verse 11 he said there was a woman that had was bent over but the Bible says why with the eyes of the flesh you see the woman bent over he says she had a spirit of infirmity in verse 16 Jesus said this woman who Satan has bound so behind every evil occurrence is the finger of an evil spiritual force your marriage did not just wake up and break Hey, somebody did it. He said, while men slept, the enemy came and so tars. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It does not happen like that. There is nothing that happens on its own. There is a power behind the scene controlling what you see. A woman was bent, but when Jesus looked in the spirit, he saw a spirit on her. So you can see somebody struggling in life. They cannot rise in business. They cannot rise maritally and you think they are lazy it is not laziness they are under a strong spiritual power for that kind of matter you don't do conversation you break it by force Jesus said this woman has been in captivity for 18 years and you want me to come and be saying it, it, it is not well Listen, it is not well at all. Jesus said this matter must be addressed now. In the midst of a preaching service, he stopped the message to address a devil. It is an error for a Christian huh, to be quiet and silent huh, in the presence of satanic oppressions. Huh. When the devil is operating, don't be quiet. Huh. If you are quiet, you will soon die. Huh. If you, I listen to me, huh, you must be vocal. Huh. There are some quarrels that don't settle by a Man, they settle by somebody dying. If Goliath does not die, the trouble will not end. There are people who will never repent. If you are waiting for them to repent, you will regret. Because it is they are they are born of Satan, their heart is full of evil. So the woman was bent over, but when you look physically, you see a woman bent. But in the spirit, Jesus said, the reason why for 18 years this woman cannot rise up is because there is a demon. I'm trying to open your eye that your problem is not natural at all. There is a power that is operating behind the scene, provoking what you see in Mark chapter 4, from the 32 to the end. He said, and Jesus moved with the apostles, and they entered the boat to go to the other side. And Jesus said, let us go to the other side. He said, at midway in the sea, there was a wind. Listen, there was a wind. And the wind made the water to become boisterous. And the waves of the water began to break into the boat. Listen to me. And Peter tried to use a bucket to remove water from the boat and put in the sea. But when Jesus stood up, he did not speak to the water. He spoke to the wind. You can't see the wind. Yet, if you see the water shaking, it means the wind is pushing it. You can't see the wind. Yet, if you see your child becoming stubborn, there is a wind pushing your child. You can't see the wind. Yet, your business is only going down. There is a wind pushing your business. You can't see the wind. Yet, people are dying in your family. There is a wind that is bringing them down in Job chapter 1 verse 18 he said when the children of Job were gathered in the elder brother's house a wind from the wilderness came and the house crumbled I came by the spirit of prophecy every evil wind that has been sent to your life go back to sender I say go back to sender I don't care who they are and where they come from by the power of the Holy Ghost I prophesy over your life that evil wind shall die today Amen Sit down What am I trying to show you? There's something behind what you see Unless you approach and address your problem from a spiritual perspective, you can't overcome Satan on earth. You, 
you must see that something is happening spiritually unless you approach and address your problem from a spiritual perspective you can't have total victory it is more than what you see when Jesus stood up he didn't speak to the water leave your business your trouble is not your business there is a wind that is pushing your business so all your wisdom does not work all what you have learned does not work I, I, they brought to me a woman for prayer she has been operated for five but four times when she is operated after about three months the thing grow back and she was booked for another one I said are you mad can't you see that it is not fibroid the same thing four times I said madam you, you, go, this, you will go die for pressure like a joke it is not a fibroid this is a spiritual matter it must be addressed from a spiritual perspective four times Jesus said while men slept so what you are seeing is not everything in your life that is planted by God and some things you didn't plant them so who gives Satan permission to come and plant in our life he used force we must use force and uproot what he planted you can't wake up and look at your farm and the things which you are not planted he said now who plant look for matchet he said and the axe is laid at the root of the tree every tree that my father has not planted it shall not it may it shall so you you you, you don't you don't play with them if you underestimate the strength of your enemies, you are applying for untimely death. These people can kill you and they bury you and life continue. Women have lost their husbands. Mothers have lost their children. Husbands have lost their wives because of a wickedness they underestimated. When Satan comes for you, he comes to kill. Hear this today. For the devil coming not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So you can't confront such people with grammar. Whose his joy is that you should die. In Acts chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, he said, And Herod arrested James and killed him. And the Jews were happy. When he saw that the death of James pleased the, the people, he took Peter to kill him. How can you use the life of somebody for entertainment? So there are people, they are using your life for entertainment. He said, when they pluck out the eyes of Samson, they said, bring him out. Let him entertain us. God forbid forbid. People who are entertained by your miscarriage. Entertained by your failure. You don't understand how a child prepares well for exam. Prepares well. Lives well. Writes well. And also fails well. And you don't understand. What happened? I'm telling you today. He said, why men slept? He said, an enemy has done this. So there are enemies that are doing things. Any occurrence in your life that is a contradiction to scripture is the work of the finger of an enemy. If something happened to you and it does not agree with what God spoke, it is Satan that did it. Don't even ask questions. Don't even look for prophet. You must confront it with anger. There are things you should not look and be quiet. I'm telling you. There are dreams you should have and not be quiet. There are some text messages people send to you. Don't be quiet. If they talk to you, reply them. So Jesus said, there is a certain requirement when it comes to entering into the purpose of God. He said, violence is required. When I saw this scripture, I thought maybe they didn't translate it well. I went and checked all Greek and Hebrew version. It is violence. It means force, power. They forceful. They powerful. <laughs> they, I want you that you leave this earth with a certain mindset that on this earth realm, nobody will give you what belongs to you. You must take it. God made David king. Saul stayed on the throne for thirteen more years. David is king. Oh on the throne until you take the crown you don't sit on your chair but the chair is yours a man is anointed king there are people now sitting on your office table 
and, and you are here working. My time will come. When, when is your time? Did he follow his time before he took your table? Let us let us understand. The man who took your chair, did he was it his time to take your chair? Uh, you are there. My time will come. Your time has passed. Let me just tell you now. Time has passed. There is a certain dimension of weakness that must be ejected from the life of a Christian if you must see God. Spiritual strength is a major requirement to confront and conquer the works of the devil on earth. You need a kind of mindset. Not be, be fear, fear. If you if you continue the way you are, I'm telling you, we see not ourselves. After 50 years, you see the same great grace and nothing has changed. You will be great grace in math, not great grace in life. If you want your life to advance, you must say, enough is enough is enough. He said there were some men. <laughs> That sat at the gate. Then they said, I said, Why sit we here till we die? Second Kings chapter 7. Why sit we here till we die? Let us march and go to the camp of the enemy. If we die, we die. We prevail, we prevail. Esther said, If I perish, I perish. But did she perish? There is nobody. I hear a voice from heaven say, you, have, you are overdue. God said, Moses, you have stayed too long on this mountain. That is a prophet of God. And he was walking. God said, Moses, come. You are walking around the mountain for, for 20 years. And God says, they told me about two. He said, you have stayed too long on this mountain. Tell the people to move forward. So God is a God of advancement. God likes men to increase. You can't be with one call box for 10 years. It is not of God. God says the path of the just is like a light that shines brighter and brighter. So according to the wisdom of God, every Christian is ordained to move from glory to glory. So but how come your life, you are moving from sorrow to sorrow, from pain to shame? It is not the work of God. You must get a certain level of anger in this service. For how long will I sit down and be waiting? In fact, who am I waiting for? What am I waiting for? So the people said, how wise? They said, why sit we here till we die? Oh boy, it's your life. Keep joking with your life. You will soon be old. And nothing has changed in your life. And you will look at the prophet, you'll be fine. His family will be fine. You will not be fine. You say, hey, they don't fool me for church. No man ever fool you. You are spiritually lazy. If you don't want to end up as a failure in the kingdom of God, you must apply spiritual violence in your day-to-day -day life. There are things you could have taken, but you were quiet. You could have said, no, this thing can't happen. You could have refused the verdict of the devil. You could have said, no, I can't have a fire brought. You would have gone, but you stayed quiet. That quietness you retained in the midst of the threat was an acceptance of the of the report. The silence of a Christian, when faced with an evil report, is unconscious agreement. When you are silent with an evil report, you have unconsciously agreed with what the devil has said. You should have spoken. I said, nah. I, it can't happen. You slept and had a dream that somebody died. You should have woke up and said, it's a lie. It can't happen. Isaiah said to Ezekiah, you are about to die. Ezekiah said, I'm not dying. This is a prophet. Now God sent me. God does not change his mind. But God changed his mind. So spiritual violence can make God alter his plan. Ezekiah said, oh God. Your will be done or let me die. He said, Lord, I'm not dying. I can't die. My children are too young. I'm not dying. God said, Isaiah, go back. I had him 15 years. So Ezekiah received an additional 15 years on his life because he was violent against a report that didn't favor him. He didn't stay quiet. Now, my problem is this. If a man can change the report of God, what is the report of Satan? If God can say die, a man said I will not die, he didn't die. Who is Satan to say die and you die? 
He said, and Jacob fought with an angel and prevailed. If a man can fight an angel and prevail, can a man not fight a demon and prevail? If a man can overpower an angel who is a demon, listen to me, open your hand, open your hand. I command fire to enter your hand today. Sit down, please. What is spiritual violence? Number one. It is a spiritual system to engage the strong hand of God to intervene in the affairs of men. Show me Exodus chapter 6 and verse 1. It is a spiritual system to engage the strong hand of God to intervene in the affairs of men. Let me see that. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand, he will let them go. And with a strong hand, he will drive them out of the land. Show me Exodus 3, 19. God said to Moses, he said, If I don't use a strong hand, Pharaoh will not allow you to go. Please read. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. God is saying that there, there are some demons like Pharaoh. If you don't use strong hand, they don't bow. So it is a system of engaging the strong hand of God to intervene in the affairs of men. Hear me, child of God. There is the hand of God and there is the strong hand of God. Psalms 136, I believe so. Verse 11 to 12. He says, and he brought them out by a strong hand. He brought them out by a strong hand. The reason why you are still in captivity is because you have not understood that there are demons that need a strong hand. The reason why you are still where you are, though you pray and you pray and shout, you have not understood that demons are in category. So the demon that is fighting you, he is not afraid of a hand. He needs a strong hand. Number two, spiritual violence is the application of spiritual force to sustain the advancement of the purpose of God. Spiritual violence is the application of spiritual force to sustain the advancement of the purpose of God. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. Bible says, Who are thou? Oh, Makadaba. Oh, mighty mountain before caving. You shall be level, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So there was a mountain in front of him, and the mountain was a hindrance. The mountain was a resistance. So spiritual violence is the application of spiritual force to sustain the advancement of the purpose of God. That what God has ordained should go ahead. You need violence because there are mountains that are standing before you. There is a mountain before your marital peace. A mountain before your financial glory. If the mountain does not move then you cannot increase. So unless you bring down the mountain there is no possibility of advancing. So he said who are thou? Oh who are thou? Oh mighty mountain. So a man can be a mountain. Who are thou? Who? Not what? Oh not mountain no. Mighty mountain before Zerubbabel. A small boy, a man, a man to stood against him. There are many of us here. The reason why we do not advance is because there is a mighty mountain before us. Surrounded and enclosed. That no matter your, your wisdom and strength, you can't advance. There are people, listen, there are people I know. From the time I began church to now, their the life has not changed. And my life is changing and they are seeing it. So, something must be wrong. We can't be serving the same God. The same God. We are in the same church. My life is advancing. Yours is not advancing. <laughs> no. Something must be wrong. It means that what is fighting you is not a mountain. It's a mighty mountain. So there is a mighty mountain. Number three. Spiritual violence is provoking heavenly assistance to possess your possessions in Christ. 
Obadiah 117. On Mount Zion, there shall be what? Deliverance first. Before they possess their possession, there is deliverance first. So you see why you can't get your possession because you have not yet been delivered. On Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, there shall be holiness, and the people shall possess their possession. So in other words, until there is deliverance by heavenly assistance, you cannot possess your possession. <laughs> Listen, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack, but you can't pay house rent. Did God lie? No. You need an assistance to enter that reality. Listen to me, eh? <laughs> uh, the absence of heavenly assistance can make the scripture appear as a lie to men. Like, you will read it and your life will be opposite. You will confess it. I shall be the head. I shall be the head. But you are not, you are not even near the tail. You are off. I'm serious, yeah? You will confess it. I am rich in Christ. What nonsense you will see a demon, a sister, a stupid devil come to the dream and sleep with her. It's not because she's immoral. There are some foolish violators. They call them violating demons. That, that their work is to make you question if you are even a child of God. They attack you so much, you begin to ask, am I really a child of God? Because everywhere you go is blocked. And they make you doubt who you are in Christ. They make it hard for you to possess your possession. You need violence if you must enter into the fulfillment of that which is ordained for your destiny. You need spiritual violence. Those of you who have dream and you are happy, I just saw you now. Hey, Daddy, hey, I saw a dream. Pastor was say, "Sir, I saw a dream. In my dream, my, my church was ten thousand, physically in two hundred people there. We need to see and say something different. In your dream, oh." You build a story building before you will build even a bungalow on earth. You have to fight. How many women that we know that are bad and keep saying, I dream I have a child. Can they get pregnant on earth? They dream and they see the child in the dream. That is a proof that God wants to give them a child. But there is a power. So until you can address evil resistance, you cannot enter the reality of your inheritance. It is your own no? Therefore, take them <laughs> and they are on. Take them, see them because there is a contention. They call Satan the opposer. Satan means opposer, opposition. Don't be deceived. There is an opposition. Prophecy came, it was clear. The prophet mentioned your name, described your house, and said, God will do this. <laughs> and God never heard one. Prophet didn't lie for you to enter that reality. Uh, <laughs> two kings cannot reign in a land either it is Saul or David one person must go down that's the law of this kingdom but while you are complacent a foolish devil comes every night to your dream give you food you wake up and you say it's well are you okay what is well wait until you go to a and they say your, your, your liver is damaged you know that it was not well these people are advancing in your life encroaching doing what should not be done and yes it is it is not well oh you must fight back so jesus said to them that spiritual violence is required to enter to enter and possess what god asked for you whether the prophecy came whether the man of god said it if you don't have spiritual violence you cannot see a fulfillment because there is a resistance the major assignment of Satan is to resist the fulfillment of the will of God on earth. That is why he sits there and no problem. Until God tell you, I will make you rich. So I say, ah, I'm coming for you. So nothing attracts the attention of Satan like an unveiling of divine purpose. When Satan knows what God has planned for you, trouble don't start for your life. No people say, man, I don't know why. From that time, they give me prophecy. All things is spoil. Yes, they think they gave us spoil. Because when the prophecy came, Satan said, Ah! So God, you plan this girl to be the best in her family? I will make her the worst. So if, even Satan likes to hear prophecy. Because prophecy shows him where he should attack you. Because the devil is ignorant of God's purpose for man unto it is revealed by the spirit through prophecy. 
as you are here, Satan does not know what God has in heart for you. But a prophet can connect to the frequency of God's heart, receive what's in the heart of God. Now, Satan cannot enter God's heart, but the prophet can go there. So, Satan has to wait for a true prophet to connect to the frequency of heaven. When you download the information, he takes his book and writes it. If he is so strong, why did he not know where Jesus was born? With all his sense. He didn't know. He began to look for him. Until he killed all children. Look. Why did he not know? Why did he know which one was Jesus? And the only time he knew is when there was a prophecy. What is he with his born king? He said, eh, a king is born. When I find and kill him. He didn't know. If he knew, how come Moses stayed in his house? He was looking for Moses to keep Moses. God took Moses and he stayed in Satan's palace. The man who Satan told to kill Moses. The man is the one that gave Moses food. Gave him a house. Even gave him money. It is prophecy that reveals purpose, identity and destiny. So Satan is a student of the prophetic. He's waiting for me to prophesy today. He's a man of God prophesy. I mean the devil. He said, cave him. Tell them. He has his book and his pen. Listen to me. It is only men who don't pay attention when God talks. When God talks, because Satan knows who God is, he writes every word and fights every word. So the prophecy I give you and you don't write, you are demons writing it. Okay, Mary, you write Mary. Um, the Lord is saying that you want to kill your family next month. Okay, he will write it down. Mm -hmm. um, God is saying that your father, they want to attack him with blood. Everything is planned. He take his Satan. And I saw prophet don't talk to the church. The Lord is saying that He wants to make you a light in your family. You go to America and through you, people will be safe. Ah, America. Okay, go and attack Adentica. She will never have a passport. You are not making passport for one year. It's not coming out. Adika is not. Because Satan has seen. <laughs> I'm showing you where the attack came from. When do you need spiritual violence? Number one. You need spiritual violence when you are faced with evil foundational problems. Show me Mark chapter 9, verse 22 to 29. When you are faced with evil foundational problem, Acts chapter 3, verse 2, and Acts 14, verse 8, he said the man was lame. Look at that. And often he has thrown him both into the fire, and where? And into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and, and help us. Go ahead. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Verse 24. When Jesus saw, immediately the father of the child cried out and said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Verse 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. He, next verse. Then the spirit cried out, convulsing greatly, eh? and came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said he is dead. 27. Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose, 28. When he had come into the house, his disciples asked him, why could we cast out? Go ahead, 29. So he said, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Stop, which kind? Go to verse 24. Which kind? Jesus asked the man, since when? 23 please. Since when? The man said, from when he was born. Go back to 21, 21. Okay, so he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said to him from childhood. Acts chapter 3 verse 2 says, and they came to the beautiful gate and they saw a man lame from his mother's home. That one is foundational problem. It's not problem that you met in life. It came before you were there. If the foundation be destroyed, wait till the righteous go do God is saying that your foundation is so relevant that if the devil tampers with your foundation he has tampered with the solidity of your building so you need spiritual violence number one when you are faced with evil foundational problem when you have a problem that began from birth that before you were born it was there you enter a family and you see that women have issue with marriage that is an evil foundational problem it did not begin with you he said the man was lame from his mother's womb it means the attack came where 
in his mother's womb. Me and mom were working on a book. His title is Now That You Are Pregnant for pregnant women so that they can speak words to the baby in their womb because foundational problems are transferred in their womb so your womb should not be where your child receives curses it should be where your child receives blessings he was lame Acts 32 lame from his mother's womb Acts 14 8 lame from his mother's womb so Acts John chapter 9 verse 1 to 4 the man was blind from birth can't you see that any problem that began from birth need violence it, it requires violence to handle so number one you need spiritual violence when the problem you are facing is an evil foundational problem number two you need spiritual violence when you are in the captivity of a hard when you are in captivity and hard bondage show me exodus 1 14 and they made their lives bitter with with what read with what with hard bondage and they made themselves with rigor look here they made their lives bitter with what hard bondage so we understand from scripture therefore that when it comes to walking in the things of God you must have an understanding that there is something called hard bondage Genesis 35 verse 17 he said and it came to pass that Rachel was in labor and it was hard labor what happened she died there is labor and there is hard labor you can labor in vain which means you labor you don't see fruits hard labor is when no matter how you labor you can't enjoy the fruit of the labor when you are faced with hard labor when you realize that despite your struggle despite your effort that is hard labor you see somebody who puts all his all his attention in education you read and you are serious but you can't pass that one is hard bondage because it's not as, as if you were lazy or you are not you are serious with education you are committed with your book but yet you can't pass why because that is what is called hard bondage so when a man is faced with hard bondage no matter your effort you can be free you 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 matter how you try you don't understand how what works for others does not work for you because it is not a bondage it is a hard bondage And this is where people get frustrated. But I have done all I can do. I tell you the truth. Not every poor man is a lazy man. Peter said we have toiled all night and we have caught nothing. That statement is a testimony that a man can labor hard and see no fruits despite his labor. We have toiled all night. Even for water to sorry him and give him a crap, nothing. How can you go with a net? Not a hook, bro. A net. If now, who could understand? A man threw a net for 12 hours. No fish came to his net. And other fishermen in the same sea, they were catching fish. It's, it's as if fish are dodging your own net. There are people here. It's as if money is dodging your life. It's as if good things is dodging you. When things happen for others, as you get to the same place, your own is something bad. That is a sign that you are in hard bondage. He said they made their life bitter with hard bondage. When you go through bitter experiences, it means it's a hard bondage. Marriage bitter. Business bitter. There are people who have gotten married and there is no single day of joy in their home. Bitter. You have read all kinds of book of marriage. You have tried everything you know. There are some parents that are in bitterness. They have raised children, five boys, yet none can have a job. You sit as a parent, you feel like a failure. Seeing all your grown-up sons that are still in their house, despite all your labor, they can't stand. I came to help you bitterness after you have spent money 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 on your child and your child returned home he didn't pass exam he like, hey, with all the money it's not your child it's a hard bondage there is something that wants you to suffer 
So no matter how things start, it must enter in pain. It must end in pain because it is a bitter experience. So the scripture says, and they were in hard bondage. Number three, when do you need spiritual violence? You need spiritual violence when you are oppressed by strong evil spirits. By what? Show me Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 to 45. By strong evil spirits. Strong ones. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes to dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Uh -huh. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Read verse 45. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more than himself, and dwell there. And the state of that man is worse than the first. Look. So, the wickedness of evil spirits differ. There are some spirits that are not wicked like others. You see, he takes spirits that are stronger than him. Oh God. This one not hearing me here. Show me Psalms 18 verse 17. He delivered me from my from those who hated me for they were two. There is enemy and there is strong enemy. <laughs> strong enemy is the one you pray, pray, pray. They come and beat you in the night for praying. They say, why did you pray? As you come to church and meet the prophet, that night you will sleep. They will whip you for seven days. Who sent you to that church? Those are no enemies. They are strong enemies. Psalms 22 verse 21 says, from the strong bulls of Bashan. Acts 23 21, the Bible says, and 40 men bound themselves in an oath that nobody will eat or drink until they kill Apostle Paul. <laughs> Those are no enemies. They are strong enemies. People who say they will not eat till you die, what kind, of, what kind of enemy is that? You have enemies that quarrel bucket with you. That quarrel land. But enemies that go to, when they carry a name, go messing has, but you don't change. These are not the enemies that you forgive. You forgive the enemies of the flesh. Witches should be killed. If they don't repent, they should die. It, it is not, we should not burn it. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? So, witchcraft makes people foolish. 40 men. Somebody left against you your job site. He doesn't have to die. That's not no problem. But enemies that come to your house, carry your, your, your dress to herbalist, that's not an enemy. They may want to kill you. That's a strong enemy. You must reply him by force. People insult you, don't reply them. That's nothing. They lie against you, don't repair them. When somebody involves demonic strategy, it's no longer an enemy. Enemy means you hate me by the flesh. Strong enemy means you are using evil powers to fight me. That one, it is fire that must settle the quarrel. And don't say, don't even try and say they don't know what they are doing. They know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing. Then they come and carry your dress. And go to messing house. No, they don't know. No, they don't know. Somebody will come and carry your picture. Carry your picture to a herbalist and say, Make this man mad. He does not know. Somebody will come and, 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 and enter your house and collect the dress of your child and take the, they know. They, I say they know what they are doing. They know. Jesus said that because those people did not know that he was the Messiah. He said, These ones, they know they are wicked. They are wicked. Forgive their humanity. Kill their witchcraft. Forgive the human in them. Kill the witch in them. If not, I'm telling you, you will bury. This is not a game. You will cry. You will lament because their wickedness knows no bound. So there are people who might call strong enemies. When a man is faced with strong enemies, he violence to overcome. Listen to me. There are some battles, I'm telling you. You can't handle it with morning devotion. Good morning, Jesus. <laughs> you know why he's fighting you. I know you come from heaven above. And you are smiling. <laughs> That's your handling. My father, my father, my father, my father. That 
power. Destroy, destroy. Lord, I want to thank you for your answer me. See that kind of laziness. You, you know to fight you. 40 people say we will not eat or drink. That they are fasting. How will you kill a witch who is fasting when you don't fast? They are fasting for you to die. People, so, listen, people so hate you. That in fact, they, they prefer for them to die and you die. That they don't want to see you rise. Even if you will cost them their life, better you don't get married. You say, that always a strong enemy now. People will tell you, over my dead body. When they say, say amen, you will die and I'll move. Over my dead body, will you marry? Amen, you will die and I'll marry. Now they give prophecy, not be you. You came and tell me, over my dead body. I will say amen to your prayer. It shall be over your dead body. Listen to me. You must learn to take people's statements seriously. Over my dead body, eh, shall you marry in this house? Yeah, war well, don't start. Now they start and give them as they give you. And Father, as they, they let her die, let me marry. She said it herself. Forgive the human in them. Kill the witch in them. Let me I tell you. Because the wickedness of this kind of enemies, these are enemies that are outside your blood. This one, no be joke. They are the ones that eat flesh and drink blood. So God says for him to handle them, he will not forgive them. He will make them eat their own flesh and drink their own blood. Abi, why God not forgive them? Isaiah 26 verse 13, 17. He says, show favor to a right, wicked man and you will not change. Bible talks He says, show favor to a wicked man and he will not change. <laughs> So they can't be changed by mercy. Judgment is what helps them. If they touch your child and they have stroke, they'll never come back again. But if they touch your child, nothing happens. They'll come and touch the other child. What they will, and they put and pam. You know why you need to touch current today? Because the first time you touch current, it shock you. Listen, you, you don't need to put advert on cable. Touch not. Your remembrance of how your body felt. You replay it. Say, no, that's it. There are some witches that today, the fire that will roast them. Oh, anyone who has touched you for evil, anyone who has come against you for evil, may God sample them a bit today. Amen and amen. May God touch them and leave a scar on them. Amen and amen. By that scar, they will know never to touch you again. Amen and amen. Leave your heart shall fire. Fire. I give you how to be spiritually violent, I want to give you three requirements for spiritual violence. Number one requirement is faith. Somebody have faith. I can hear your voice. Shout it louder. In Mark chapter 11, verse 12 to 23, the Bible says, and Jesus saw a fig tree and he cursed the tree and said may no man eat from you he said the next day peter saw the tree that the tree had withered and peter said lord look the tree which you cause as withered and jesus replied have faith in god for if you have faith you will say to this mountain oh boy faith is boldness to confront the righteous are bold as a lion Boldness. I will not die. Boldness. Every time the spirit, every time the devil wants to afflict you, he introduces the spirit of fear in your atmosphere. But where there is faith, there is no fear. So the first requirement for a man to have spiritual violence is faith. Unconditional trust in God. Faith is the ability to act on what God has spoken. It is different to belief and to faith. Faith is acting. Believing is accepting. Faith is the action. So unto all, Jesus said that your faith has made you well. A woman was sick, 12 years bleeding. And she heard that Jesus is coming. Others will come and say, Lord, Lord, heal me, I am sick. <laughs> the woman said, I know they were writing them. I will touch him. Jesus had so many protocols. One even had a sword. His name is Peter. Those, those of you said that men of God should not have. That Jesus' his protocol had knife. But I won't get knife when I talk. Knife. He caught somebody's ear. <laughs> she came. 
Imagine people were gathered and everywhere Jesus entered, he was followed by at least thousands of people. This woman had an issue of blood. Bleeding for 12 years means she has become physically weak. And this is the weak woman coming, pressing and moving amidst the crowd. Stretch her hand and touch Jesus. Then Jesus said, who touched me? I said, God, you don't know who touched you. A prophet did not know. Because there's a kind of faith that withdraws a blessing without the permission. The Lord told me this morning, he said, my son, you need aggressive faith. That's what he told me this morning, aggressive faith. Faith that does not, that does not shake to what God has said happened. No, no, this is shake. Father, you said I will not die. No bullet can kill me. No devil. That is aggressive faith that you can look at the enemy eyeball to eyeball. You see, if you try me, you die. Aggressive faith. The ability to hold your stomach and squeeze that fiber. Aggressive faith to stand on what God has spoken and be not moved by what the devil is doing. Aggressive faith that when God says yes, it doesn't matter who says no, yes must happen. Aggressive faith. What kind of woman is that? Jesus turned. He said, Woman, your faith, not my power. Your faith. Jesus said, who touched my cloth? Peter said, sir. Yeah, Jesus said, who touched my cloth? Peter said, many have been touching you. People were touching him. They received nothing. Somebody touched the hem. I received something. I don't understand. It's not how close you are to the prophet. Look at him. It's the kind of faith you have. Peter that was close to Jesus, touching him did not touch something. Some, listen, in the kingdom of God, overtaking is allowed. Peter was there for long, did not touch. A woman came from behind and said, I cannot be like this again. And she rushed and came and collected what others did not collect. Open your hand, I prophesy. By the power of the Holy Ghost, today receive aggressive faith. A man and a man. Sit down. Acts 14. Bring it up. Verse 8 and 9. A man lame from bed. He said, and Paul looked at him and saw that the man had faith to be. Ah, and, and in Lystra, a certain man without strength, without strength in his feet, was sitting, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked Yucatan. This man had Paul speaking, and Paul observing him intently and seeing that he had faith to be healed, faith to be healed, and with a loud voice said, Stand up straight on your feet. Stop. And he lived and walked. Listen. He didn't say stand up and walk. Paul never finished talk. The man will start running. Oh my God. Paul said stand up. The man leaped. Listen to me. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You, you can never give birth to a child. And the child begins to run without walking. Or to walk without creeping. But how come the man didn't walk? The man leaped. Paul never said leap. The man's faith. Paul was still in stand up. The man's faith entered jumping. So aggressive faith is what led host of the promise of God. Until you see it, you don't leave it. The man leaped. Paul says stand. The man leaped. So I can be prophesying one million, but you are entering 20 million. Why? Because your faith is an aggressive faith. Listen to this. <laughs> I was not feeling fine. Eh? And I sat on the and I sat on the chair. I sat down. <laughs> and they came and gave me a drip. Please sit down. <laughs> they came and gave me a drip. <laughs> they put me one drip. Then I sat. I was sitting there. And my body was in pain. Then I said, What am I doing here? I I moved my myself. I dragged down. I remove it. Bait came to church. It has never returned. Sickness likes you to pamper it. No, my head. Co cover my foot. My foot is hot. My foot is cold. I will cover my waist. Touch my back for here. Press on for here. Press on for here. Ah, what am I doing here? Ah! Why am I poor? Ah! You end 
enter your store, you slap the shop. If you don't give me two million this month, I will close you. Don't play. You command your shop. Produce now. Are you, I, my shop, if you don't give me money this month, I will handle you. Your shop will panic. This man is serious. <laughs> Listen eh? <laughs> you see children, see your child, bring that bottle. <laughs> you say, hold it a bit. <laughs> you tell your child, don't touch. See what he does. Don't touch. Then, don't touch. He cannot try it again. The dead don't touch. He's showing that the next is coming slap. So I say, Satan, leave me. Satan, leave me now. Ah! You rise on your feet. You say, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Who is he that saith a thing? And it cometh to pass. When the Lord has not decreed, a thousand will fall on the side. Ten thousand on the right. It will not come near me. Oh, yet they shall gather. But not by God they will scatter. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today. It's the same forever. When God says, yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Lift your hands, yeah. 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 Which which one is Satan? Leave me. Are you doing romance? What is leave me? Satan, don't touch me. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See me on prayer line. Sometimes I shout. Even you will panic when you no get demon. You never see him. Come out! You show the, Sometimes I'm doing prayer line. I'm praying for somebody else. The other person they fear. Only they shout. Come out! You, you, even if you don't have demon, you, your, your skin for shakes more. It vibrates you. Come on now. <laughs> Satan, don't ever sleep with me in my dream again. Don't if you try, I destroy your kingdom. See, this one is serious. This one, one trouble. No, I, don't, I don't know what I've done today. I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. Stop this, your pity party. Nobody will show you pity on this earth. In fact, Asha, no, the hell up. You know, they didn't call her. If you get wounded, Asha, they won't go away. Eh? You must be violent. That is fair to confront. Spiritual boldness. And you tell yourself, I cannot end here. David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to come against the army of God? Goliath threatened them. He threatened them for more, for more than 40 days. But when David came, he said, enough is enough. No more untimely death in my family. Enough is enough. No more disappointment in my house. Enough is enough. Until you rise and say it is enough, it will never stop. Strong men don't go down to stronger men rise up. There's a time to pray gently. Obviously, when Jesus came to the tomb of Lazarus, he shouted with a loud voice. Lazarus, come out. No, Lazarus, come out. My marriage. My business, come on. My millions, come on. My head, come on. My finances, come on. My destiny, come on. Whatever has been kept in the grave, Allah, come on, come on. Sit down. Number two. Requirement for spiritual violence is prophecy. First Timothy 1.18 He said, Timothy, by keeping with the prophecy made on you, fight the good fight. You know, there is something that used to disturb me. As a prophet, though, let me tell you the truth. Sometimes I used to say, as a man of God, why will I call at somebody and say, your name is Mary. She knows her name. And I say, you have a fibro. But she knows she has a fibro. Why? Until God told me that prophecy is a weapon for spiritual violence. Job 6.25 How forcible are right words. Listen to me. When prophecy comes, it comes to add your spiritual power to fight. Paul said, Timothy, by the prophecies made on you, fight.
fight the good fight. So there are battles you will not overcome until you lay hold of a prophecy. There are times that a battle in your family is not going down no matter how you try. Connect to a prophet. When a prophecy is released, it becomes a weapon to fight. You are still fighting empty handed. There are times things happen to me and I'm, I'll say, but God, you told me, this, you told me that one. When the time came for Esau to come and kill Jacob, he said, Jacob sent away all his family and he was left alone. And Jacob said, God, you said to me, when a man begin to pray like that, he's laying hold of prophecy. He said, God, you said to me that you will deal well with me and you will give me prosperity. Behold, Esau is coming to kill me. But you said to me that you will multiply my seed. God has no choice but to confirm his word. But if there was no prophecy, Jacob will be praying with what? Prophecy is a weapon. Don't, Bible says, 1 Thessalonians 5 20, despise not prophesying. And people say, they go, they just call people that name. Ah. Don't know what you're saying even if you know your name the fact that i am calling your name without knowing you it means god is doing something already prophecy is is an it is a system to introduce spiritual help in the affairs of men and god carried ezekiel to a valley of dry bones and god was there yet god didn't speak to the bones he spoke to ezekiel to speak to the bones i don't understand how can god be in the valley god sees the bones god does not speak to the bones he goes and look for a man and say come and speak to the bone but god talk to yourself now because prophecy is a system to bring help Timothy, by the prophecies made on you, fight the good fight. By the prophecies. So prophecy is a strong weapon. That's my wife. I have my dream book from 2009 to now. My book of dreams. You see there? Sometimes something happened. I'm going to look for the book. I say, hey, I need to pray. God, you told me this thing. This one cannot happen now. This is not what you told me. You told me I will have this number of children. This everything is written. I, I saw you in a dream. This is what I saw. So anytime my life wants to go, and I say, no, this is what I saw. I can stand against Satan's attack because I know what God said. So prophecy is a weapon. Are you with me? Makadiso vana ibarakaya onto barashiga dabe anda parakida I want to give you three ways of applying spiritual violence. No, there's still one requirement for spiritual violence. Unity. I forgot that one. Unity. This is very important. Matthew 12, 24 to 29 and Acts 2, 1 to 3. The third requirement for spiritual violence is what? Unity. Let's tell you something. Now, when the Pharisees heard it, they said that this fellow cast out demons except by Beelzebub, the ruler of demons. They were speaking to Jesus. Go ahead. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom, read, what? <laughs> shall, shall not stand. Read, begin to read verse well. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. Uh -huh. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? 27. Ooh. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judge. 28. Now begin to read. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come to you. 29. Read, everybody read 29. Or who, 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 how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man and then you will plunder his house? Who is the strong man? Mm -mm. The strong man is unity. He's talking about a kingdom divided. He now says, if you enter a strong man's house, his strength is what? Their unity. Many of us today, husband, you need to go back and agree with your wife. That's why your business is failing. Because when you break the, the connection of unity, there is no force for spiritual violence. 
you will never defeat the power fighting your family until you people become one. Hear it today and hear it well. How good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together. It's like oil flow. Oil flows where? Where people are one. To be one does not mean to be in the same place. It means to be in one accord. Not in the same location, but in one accord. Acts 2, 1 to 3. He said, and they were gathered in the same place in one accord. What happened? Fire came from above. If you must activate spiritual violence, the third thing you need is unity. Any demon you go to confront alone, those who didn't go with you will bury you. For whatever two or three are gathered, not that they are gathered, in my name, agreeing on one thing. For if two of you agree on anything, the Father will do it. That is, it is clear. The third requirement for spiritual violence to be effective is unity. So anytime Satan wants to destroy a family, he, doesn't, he goes after their strong man. Who is their strong man? Unity. When the devil destroys unity and you fight one another, there is no family which is disunited that can stand. But Jesus said, if kingdom divided cannot stand, doesn't matter how you do, it will fall. In fact, a divided family does not need external enemies. They will kill themselves. Are you hearing me? So the dead requirement to enter that realm is unity. If you are not one, there are things you can't fight and prevail. If you are not one, there are battles you will not overcome. If you are not one, there are things you will never have no matter how you cry. So unity can be taken for granted. I tell you the truth, dear me, child of God. <laughs> Any person that has no value for unity will soon be in a casualty of spiritual warfare. You will be, a, they will kill you first. He that breaketh the hedge, the serpent will bite. And when he finishes biting you, you go and bite everybody in the house. If a snake is outside, you open the door. The snake will start with who? But will he end with you? You will continue your family. Many of us husbands, we have broken the hedge. Many fathers. Many churches. This is why, you see, the church of Cameroon has issues to stand. Because we, the way we fight ourselves, the way we eat, speak against ourselves, the absence of unity has reduced the spiritual force of the church of Jesus Christ until we become one. Show me a church where leaders, elders are one. They can't, there is no devil that can stop them. In Genesis 11 verse 6, he said the people are, were one and they said, let us build a tower. It, it took God to come and destroy the plan. They, they didn't have Holy Spirit. Just because they were united, God had to come down from heaven to scatter them. Even God fear unity of wicked men. Have you not read? They shall come in one way. Go back in how many ways? Seven. Why, why God scatter them? Because if they go back in one way, they will come back to you. You, you go fear. So God says, when you come to your meeting, he has to say, you go for naught, you go sir. Because if they stay in one place, you will be finished. When Ezekiel prophesied, he said, the bones came together. Have you not read it? So the first thing the prophecy did was to bring unity to the bones before life could come. The reason why there is no revival is because the bones are scattered. Your sister is not speaking with your brother. Your brother is not speaking with your sister. Father is praying in the room. Mother is praying in the parlor. What are you doing? You are joking. You will soon, listen, I'm not speaking bad. But you will soon cry if you don't stop it. Whatever it will cost you to be united, sacrifice it. Come, sacrifice your pride. Sacrifice your anger. Whatever you have to do. Listen to me. Eh? <laughs> Show me a young man, whether he's poor, how? He marries a gay, both of them are poor. If they are united, Reverend, boy, give them 10 years, I swear, you will see their life. It doesn't matter what is fighting them. One will chase a thousand. Two will chase ten thousand. But I thought two should chase by two thousand. If equation, if one is one thousand, so you now one thousand, one thousand. So we two now two thousand. 
but how come when you were alone, just 1,000? Me, I just 1,000. How come when we came together, instead to be two, it became 10,000, which means God added himself as an equation. So it is one, two plus God. If one chase 1,000, two should chase how many? 2,000. That is not mathematics. We say two is 10,000. How? Show me the, which kind of equation is that? Unless there's another spiritual factor that comes. If you have no value for unity, you can enter God's glory. It's not possible. Families in one WhatsApp group, they insult themselves until they leave the group. Swallow your pride. Listen to me. Swallow your pride. Husband and wife that cannot hold their hands and pray. They are attending the same church. You are pretenders. Go back. Stop coming to this church. Go back and pray with your wife. We people pray when you come back. Because there is no profit of coming here. And you and your wife are not agreeing. I'm sweating. Just as they sweat. You know, we walk, no nothing. This sweating is a waste of time until you understand that the destiny of your children is still at stake until you and your wife can agree. Satan will chop them for Christmas until, until you can agree with your wife. A man can be in America, his wife's in Cameroon and they agree. And some can be sleeping in the same room and they are not agreeing. Because we are proud. We are bitter. When it comes to unity, you must swallow pride. You must swallow bitterness. If it, it, it was cush me, leave the cush. Me when they one. Show me any family where there is untimely death. You will see this unity first. Go on. I may go and check. Check it. If I'm wrong, come and tell me I repent. Show me any family where people are dying. You will hear say, the one they accuse him and say the key. Satan must first use those things to penetrate. If you have not bound the strong man, you can't plunder the goods. Who is the strong man? So imagine the kind of life we are living where we are not one. Resident, uh, overseer is not speaking with the resident pastor. Yet yeah, they come to church and they are. This pretense of Satan, I'm not saying Satan, Satan, they see. He see not spiritual. He see these people are liars. You will never overcome. There are some battles you want to engage. You need a partner. If two agree, you need a partner. And there is no better partner than a close person. Why do you agree with foreigners? You can't agree with family. Now pride. The time has come for you to go back to your house and say, see, eh? we must be one in this family. Look at the family. No girl is married. When I see caution myself, you, you will never defeat that altar. Because the strength of witchcraft, these people are united. Yeah, they shall come in one way. But us, we come in ten ways. When Satan is coming, they are structured. They don't break rank. You want to fight them? When 40 people took an oath against one man. 40. They say, oh, we'll not chop. I know they agree, they'll not chop. We they put small fasting for you. Say, me, no, no, chop me. So put the high chop meat. We, we can't even agree. Simple fasting. Simple fasting. They want me go act. We joke. We joke for AGM. We go for repent. The glory we want to see is at the detriment of bringing radical unity. Lovable, touchable unity. That I love you as my neighbor in the love. I am your keeper. I can stand and shield you. Ah, there's unity. Before your sister is crying and you're telling her, Asha, and you have money to give her. You're not united in your family. What are you doing money in your account and your own brother cannot pay her rent? God gave you that money to help them. If you don't want to help them, sickness will come and take the money. Let me tell you today. You see, money, money is to be used or it shall be used. If you don't use money, Satan will use it for you. All these things you are building for yourself. Job did that. Job lost everything. Yes, the Bible says, and God turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Who he prayed for, not for himself. When he understood the power of unity, Job was a, a lone prophet. So no, me, I don't mix with other men of God. And so Job can knock him for his hands. To he learn. Say a tree can never make a forest. No matter how mighty a tree is, 
One tree. It's never a forest. I know you get anointing. I know say God is talk for you. But be careful the way you treat others. You are not speaking with your sister. Not speaking with your brother. Not speaking with your father. What? 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 Are, listen. What are we fighting? Is there any trophy for family quarrel? I cannot even continue my message again. There's no way. You know, I didn't want to say this point. The Lord says, "See it." I only continue next week because this is what we have to pray. That devil that is binding unity in my family, we fight you. Why can't we stand? Why can't we be one? Oh my God. Oh my God. You can't hold your, your wife's hand to pray. I would say, if a man matches his wife, his prayer will, be, will not be answered. You know why? When you break the flow of unity, it has power, Satan has power to hinder your prayer. You are praying, God of like God say, I'm not answering you. You are not one. How good and pleasant it is. Psalm 33 verse 1. When brethren dwell together. You see, it is now like the oil. When does oil come? When they are together. So there is an anointing that comes on a family when they are one. It comes on a church. That is why even in departments in church, Satan will just send one person there, the person will go and bring trouble. And that department lose their glory. Terrible. Listen to me. I swear. I do not like people that have no value for unity. Because if you walk with such men, you will end up a failure. They carry a wrong atmosphere. They speak against all men of God. What is the problem? In this thing, eh, nobody is perfect. If they are genuine, we walk with them. Cover their mistake. Bible say, law of cover sin does not expose. Cover it. Why are you telling me what your sister did? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. She fornicated. You saw it. Cover it and pray for her. Don't tell me. Why must you report to me? You are trying to have a good face to me. You will never be white by painting somebody black. You know, I tell now. It is time for us to be one. We are lucky. Next week, I'll tell you how to engage spiritual violence. But I'm sorry, the Holy Ghost has helped me here. Because there is no need giving you principles that will not work because we are not one. Because if there is no unity, the principles I want to give you, listen to me, this I swear before God, eh? this thing I want to see, principle, an angel gave them to me this morning, not a human being. I'm not, he gave me with scripture. He appeared to me. I said, this is what you will say. I'm not, listen, I need to talk for food. But no. I need to talk the thing. Because even in the vision this night, the stress on unity. They said, they said, servant of God, all these principles only work when you people are one. And the Lord said to me, he said, the reason why AGM as a whole has not advanced to where it's supposed to be is because us, all the branch pastors are not one. Jesus told me, does he lie? So why should you have a branch that has 50 members when the headquarter is having 2,000 members? Something must be wrong somewhere. He said, the eight branches of AGM, we are not one. Pastors are not agreeing with me. Things are happening. The Lord said, if you don't correct that, AGM can't move into the glory. This is the prophetic word for our 10 years. The Lord says, unity, rise on your feet.